In the last 15 to 20 years, my work has taken me to many corners of our country, visiting schools and communities. In many places, I've found that in Indigenous education, we seem to have lagged behind, and nowhere more so than in the remote areas of our country. We'd see schools and communities often staffed with a kind of school leadership and with teachers that were not necessarily up to the job. And when we look at schools, they'd be sad, tired places that didn't look particularly inviting. It's awful to think that this was what was considered normal. It's awful to think that this is what was considered good enough uh, for Aboriginal communities. And I think underpinning that was a sense of out of sight, out of mind. Well, I like to think that today, particularly in places like the Kimberley, this is no longer the case. Led by some dedicated and talented educators and leaders, often working across vast distances and in some difficult circumstances, schools are rising to the challenges ahead. For a number of years, the Strongest Martyr Institute has been active in the Kimberley, working with school and community leaders and other partners to embed the Strongest Martyr philosophy. Recently, I decided to go check things out myself. First destination, Columbaroo, one of the most remote communities in Australia. We were the guests there of Columbaroo School. Good morning, everybody. So nice to see you. Now, you probably, some of you I know read about me because when we got here yesterday, you were telling me all about the whole thing. What's that thing that we talk about? Um, Strong and smart. Yes, got it, thank you. Strong and smart. So what would you like to be when you leave this school? Strong and smart. Uh, see, the kids at Schubert, they wouldn't say, they wouldn't say strong and smart because they, they, when they say strong and smart, they got to sound strong and smart. So they say, strong and smart. <laughs> So when you leave this school, what do you want to be? Oh, I think you can do better than that. What's the thing that we say when we're going to leave this school we're going to be? Yeah. What I talk about with Stronger Smarter is the culture of the school. The school has high expectations in certain areas. This is the, our culture. This is the culture of the school. My name's Kathleen. My name's Bronwyn. My name's Quinara. My name is Mickey Sharp. <laughs> My name is Delaney. And I, and love, I love being in school. school! We need to look beyond what's straight in front of us. We've got to look at the big picture because when it's all said and done, a place like Columbaroo has to have a plan. And that's why I chose Stronger Smarter. And I suppose it chose us. What does it mean to be strong? Uh, listen to the teacher. What does caring mean? No teasing. No teasing. Um, when right. other people are crying, you go help them. Yes. Caring with your friends. Yes, and caring no with your friends. Nothing. When people cry, they, uh, you got to hug them. Mm. Hug them. For me, the strongest, smartest focus in this school has to be forever. Not just 2012 not just the teachers of 2012. It has to be a buy-in from everyone. Now, the school's bought in, the community's buying in, and the children have definitely bought in. The children themselves need to understand where they belong. When I see the little kids coming up and saying how proud they are, because they know that they're learning something it belongs to them, belongs to their mum, dad and their ancestors. The students are responding to it really well. They're great, getting a greater sense of pride within themselves. Their self-esteem and identity is growing. And with the Stronger and Smarter being introduced now at the same time, um, through culture we can link it quite strongly. Norma is one of West Australia's most outstanding teachers and she leads a team of community teacher aides in the school. Today, more Aboriginal people are putting their hand up to work in the school because they like what's going on. Jane is a local parent and she's been on staff there for four years. Her confidence and the way she's valued by the school is something one would rarely have seen in a remote school such as this even a few years ago. 
Even with its remoteness and complexity, Kalambaru School is finding ways to deliver a quality education for its children. From the remoteness of Kalambaru, we headed to Kananara, the northeastern hub of the Kimberley. When I met Aboriginal staff at Kananara School, I was so impressed with their courage and tenacity. Yes, this was hard work. Yes, they faced many challenges, but they were up for it. It was such a nice um, thing to hear that Chris Sara was in, and his team was here today, and um, just getting the opportunity to come and you know, meet the team. You guys probably saw that movie, uh, you know, Driving Miss Daisy. I'm driving <laughs> Chris Sara. So, you know, Morgan Freeman, I'm the, I'm the other version of Morgan Freeman. That's the man here. Right? So, but listen, I, um, it's great to, to come to the Kanara District High School. But I tell you what, in terms of um, just Aboriginal um, school leaders across the Kimberley, we're in a real strong space. So there's nothing better to come on the Kanara District High School and see you guys here being doing the, the work that you're doing. The message is so pure, you know, you've got to be strong and you've got to be smart, you know, you've got to be, you can be Aboriginal and you can be successful. That's a message a lot of our kids need to get to, I reckon, because, you know, a lot of them uh, think they can't achieve as mm. well as anyone else. Mm. And a lot of that sometimes is the attitude of the teacher as well. Mm. You know, you just take it for granted that a lot of the kids who are Aboriginal in your class they want to achieve. Have you guys ever heard somebody speaking in regards to the actual word shame? Where the questions to me are like, what is shame? How do you feel? All this kind of thing. I believe that's a bit of a barrier for our mob as well. Yeah, speak shame. Yeah. We, I talk to kids about that, about that sort of um, sense of feeling shame and how that was holding us back. Mm. Um, and then get them to understand why they feel mm. shame. And you know, when you, when you trace the history of of say some of the missions, they were made to feel ashamed oh, yeah. of being yeah. Aboriginal, yeah. you know, and when kids can understand that, yeah. um, so you get, then the conversation saying, well, if the, the more you feel ashamed, the more you're being like they want you to be, you know. The yeah. trick is to get them to understand what's the truth about yeah. our, our cultural identity and that's something to be proud about. They got the right idea. They're ripping too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look at that out there, eh? That's magnificent. Just majestic. Sure. Yeah, beautiful. It's a nice country around here, but oh. eh? That's magnificent. Are the rocks starting to get darker, or is it my Yeah, no, they are getting darker. From there, we went to Daywell School, which is on Doon Doon Station. It's about 80 kilometres from Kananara. And when we got there, we heard the deadliest song about the imminent invasion of cane toads, who, like me, were coming all the way from Queensland. Ah, oh, thank you so much for that. My house is in a town called Kabulcha, and when I go out my back door, there is cane toads everywhere. And they are ugly, especially them ones when you see them, and then you come out and they look like this, look. Some, some are not too bad, they look like this, look. But the other ones, they mostly look like this at you. And I say, hey, what are you looking at me like that for? And then they go like this, look. Uh, can I read you this book? Yes! It's illustrated by the children of Sherberg State School. So I wrote this book called Dingoes Are Not Dogs. In the classroom that day, I met but these gorgeous children. So dogs. polite, so doing? engaged. They were excellent students and they would be excellent in any classroom in the world. And while Doon Doon Station and places like it in the Kimberley may be very, very remote, they are no longer out of sight or out of mind. He spotted the black dog hiding in the bushes behind him. 
Hey, which way? <laughs> sorry, sorry. Did you get a fried thing? Did you get a fry? Sorry. But that dog, that dog, other dog, he got a fry too. Long. So Bridget, you know, like when we go and visit the schools, the schools that we've seen so far, and yeah. the number of Aboriginal staff we've worked with, yeah. you get the sense, without kind of assuming too much, the Kimberley is probably, in a historical sense, at its strongest point, like now. Now it's at its strongest point ever. It's basically the best space we've been in. You know, Aboriginal people, whether it's AIOs, you know, Aboriginal teachers, Aboriginal principals, um, across across Kimberley schools, you know, are really embracing the stronger, smarter approach, but also embedding, you know, leadership practice within their schools. I just, I just thought I was totally uplifted by the, um, the schools that visit visit today, and it's just, you know, I mean, for a Kimberley bloke to see it like it is, that we're in a really good space. And they can say what people can say whatever they want, you know, like, yeah. um, oh, it's so remote, Aboriginal communities are complex because of this and that and all of that kind of thing. We've been in those sorts of schools, um, and here they are really cracking it, you know. The kids are so polite, so hungry to learn, um, and it's a quality school environment. You know, like the school we just came from, that's as good as any school you'll see yeah. in, the, in the country. That's as good as any school you'll see in the world. Um, and it's remote, so there is there's no excuse. It's just awesome. See you again. Oh, good to and see welcome you, to Hall yeah, Street. Thank you. Here we are at last. We are. We are. I okay. told you I'd make it. Okay, good. It's one of Australia's most remote communities. Halls Creek has faced some really tough times in its past. But when we got there, we found a really vibrant, clean, and happy school, just like you would expect in any place in the country. I found a really strong sense that the staff, the students, and the community were facing up to these tough challenges and they were going places together. Some people use brush. Some of the challenges I have seen at Halls Creek have been dysfunctional classes, uh, children not engaged with learning, uh, parents being very angry with the school and, and the curriculum that was being delivered. And so as a result of these new initiatives, there's been a change and shift in the culture and the community's expectations and uh, the buy-in from parents and community members wanting to become involved in the school. There's been a very significant momentum shift, a shift in the power base in the school. The students have a greater sense of pride and take an active interest in their learning and their future directions. Uh, Aboriginal leaders in the school are taking a greater role in the decision-making process Parents and community members are becoming actively involved in what a school should look like, sound like, and feel like. For any community members here, if there's one message I can send to you is that is you've got a good school here, you've got a, an excellent, he didn't pay me to say this, but you've got an, your principal here is one of the best I've seen in the country, and I see a lot of schools and I see a lot of school principals across the country and I can tell you with absolute certainty that you've got something good here and something worth valuing. At a quiet spot just outside of Halls Creek, we sat down with a couple of teachers and community members just to have a yarn about the school and the community and how things were going. You know, when you look around, the town, you see Aboriginal people walking, head down, kicking the stone. There's no pride sometimes you see uh, in this place, you know, in town. Uh, we need to look up and we need to look at people in the face and say good day to them because we are part of this country. And I want our kids to be like that, you know, we, we want them to be strong in their literacy and numeracy, functional. And, and we want them to be strong in their identity. That's the three things that we should be pushing at our school, and we are. It's a community, the school, the teachers and the students all working together to improve the outcomes. And I think um, that's been a change in the education history itself, hasn't it? 
about bringing our parents in and sitting down and talking. I've noticed a big improvement in the last two years with my daughters in themselves. They're feeling a bit more confident about talking about schoolwork and, and what they're doing and that push to, you know, having higher expectation of the kids. And when they're being pushed to be better, they improve, I guess. And you have young parents like Jody and a few other uh, parents who are now sort of really uh, coming into the school and, and, and looking at their students, asking questions, what are they learning, and, and, and just being part of the school. Having the kids, they're watching all the time, so if they're seeing parents in there talking to teachers, and not feeling shame, being you know confident. I think the kids will grow up seeing that as normal, mm. and they're not rubbish. They're not. They don't have to be shamed to talk to white people. The stronger, smarter philosophy is all about a strength-based approach to education. It's not about assuming that we know the answers from some central point, and we can just plonk them on schools in all different locations throughout the country. It's about taking the time to sniff the breeze and find out what's good and building upon those things that are good in communities, uh, building upon those things that are good about a teaching staff, playing to the strengths of school leaders and getting people to be the best they can be. We went on to Wankajanka to visit another school. Again, a remote school doing the right things, demanding the best from both teachers and from children, while at the same time, honouring community and honouring that sense of cultural identity. Strong, smart and proud. Oh, show me, show me what it looks like to be strong, smart and proud. You say this was smart, yeah? Smart. Proud. Show me, look, look. Proud. Come on, breathe in, breathe in like this when you're proud. Look. Yeah. Well, do you know what? So when we talk about a stronger, smarter, philosophical approach, we would never suggest to school leaders or communities, here is the solution. But rather, we just want to say, here is a philosophical way to think about the things that you're doing in your school and your community in a way that is underpinned by high expectations thinking. We talk about embracing a positive sense of cultural identity so that we can nurture that, so that children are not colluding with a stereotype, but in fact all of us are about nurturing a strong and positive sense of being Aboriginal. And the visitors know that this middle is the, is the Maori line, the skin line. And every one of you remember your totems too. Now, what totem you you people here? Snake. Snake. The snake and the The possum and long leg swamp frog and the yam. Hello. 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 See hello. The children, they sort of, they treated their teachers like strangers, you know, because yeah. they were white fellows now here and all that. But since we've given them all skin grips mm. and put them in their in their totems mm. and their mo and know all of their moti lines, the kids are now respecting their teachers yeah, and yeah. say, "Oh, you're my uncle. Yeah. You're my cousin. Yeah, yeah. that's you're all this. Oh, you're my mum." If we could have understood this mm. 30, 40 years ago, mm. yeah. Yeah. You're, like, you're breaking um, barriers like um, sorrow, you know. Sorry, they used to worry all the time, these kids, but now they're connecting with people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And if they're learning about the moiety lines and, and um, mm. all of that kind of thing, it's not, mm. it's not kind of undermining the culture or their no, identity no. stuff. Mm. It's actually strengthening that. That's so right. that when they understand that when they're adults, mm. they'll have business to attend to. Yeah, it's fantastic. Turn out eventually. Yeah. We talk about embracing positive community leadership in Aboriginal communities. Not a kind of leadership that's about colluding with or reinforcing a sense of victim status, but one that is about 
uh, transcending beyond into a more powerful, more honourable kind of way of being Aboriginal. And one is that one that is more aligned with being the truth about who we are. The Stronger Smarter philosophy also talks about high expectations, relationships. And in a relationship, together we decide where the bar should be so that we can attend to any complexity along the way. We also talk about innovative and flexible approaches to school modelling and school staffing. That's what we mean when we talk about the Stronger Smarter philosophy. The buildings are just buildings. They're just bricks and mortar, you know, or tin and grass or whatever. But they're just buildings. That, that's all they are, you know. What gives this place heart or what will make this place successful are the people in it. So in terms of whatever we do and wherever we go, the gift we have as an education system is how we connect people. That's the power of Stronger Smarter is one, how we connect people for the purposes of educating kids, but also how we connect people who are going to live and share space together. If we'd had the answers, we already would have the, we wouldn't have the situation that we currently face in many places. So we don't have the answers, all we have is a process. And all we can depend on is that process to help us connect people, to make a difference to the kids. We left Fitzroy Crossing and made our way to the historic Nukunbar Station where we visited Kalkaria Community School. It was their last day of term and this was awards day. It was so good to see so many parents present and to see their school motto, Strong and Scudder, in action. But I wanted to ask you your thoughts about the whole um, kind of philosophy of Strong and Scudder. Scudder is just like deadly in a way, you know, everyone uses it's deadly, but here it, it's scudder, you know, and, uh, together we learn, together we succeed, and that's the school motto, and I mean, working together is how we can achieve things, together as a group, yeah, it ties in the whole community as well as the school, you know, because we can achieve great things if we're doing it together. I don't know, to me it's a job and I hear people say that all the time, it's just a job and you can only do so much. But as an Aboriginal person working with Aboriginal people, it's not just a job, it's a, it's a calling and it's, a, it's about people's lives. You know, and it's about making a difference to that, and you can't just call that a job. Yeah, it's personal. Yeah, it is. It's personal. It's very personal. And it matters when you fail, you know, because you're not just letting yourself down, you're letting people who have been failed repeatedly down. My good mate Donna Bridge, who's been an exceptional school leader at East Kalgoorlie Primary School, is now the principal of Fitzroy Valley High School. She drove us on the final leg to Broome. You know, if I'm going to spend 10 years in Fitzroy, I want to know that that 10 years has been well invested so that those kids that are now the most challenging kids, as they become adults, yeah. I have some sense that they will be better parents than maybe what their yeah. parents currently are to them because they've had a better sense of themselves. Yeah. And the you know, listening to Donna talk about the personal challenges and what she does and how for her this is more than just a job. It makes me think about my own work and my own commitment to our children in this country. And I've often talked about how big the challenges are and how hard this work is. But from what I've seen in the Kimberley, I get a sense of hope. The momentum is building and we are making a difference. Things are on the move. There really is no place to hide if you have low expectations. We know we can do this.
Australia is a fantastic country. It's an ancient land which has seen many challenges in its time. And it's kind of nice to know that my people have been here for thousands and thousands of years confronting those challenges and we've survived. Today's challenges are about education for our children and we're up for that. We've shown that in many schools right across Australia and educators have embraced us as part of this challenge. Today we are seeing schools that are delivering on the promise of a stronger, smarter future for our children.